In the previous video, I showed you all the techniques you might need to know to make a part that is way too small to make on your Swiss machine. But in today's video, I want to go over something different. I want to go over how you can make your cycle run as fast as possible, but without touching any speeds or feeds. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to do exactly that in solid cam. This is called turbo mode, which is exactly that. It's turbo mode. Well, else you think it does. It makes your machine run fast. Duh. All right, let's run this bad boy. I want to show you what you need to look out for. So it's ready to go and I'm just gonna press start. Oh, close the door first, of course. I'm just gonna press start. So it's gonna take off like a normal program, but we know we moved that weight code right above the second threading cycle. So right now it's at the first one, not a big deal. We'll let it do its threading. It's going to deburr the front, deburr the back. Now here's where I gotta be careful, right? Here's where I gotta turn my feet right knob down to zero. And if you do this, you really need to watch out because this is probably the most dangerous part of this process. So I got it at 10% right now, right? The threading tool's barely moving because it's in rapid, but the arc move the subspindle is gonna do. Watch how fast this is, ready? Look at that. So when I just turn it up one click, watch, ready? I'm gonna go up, then down, I'm gonna go up, then down. So you can see how much it moved, that's a lot. You really gotta be careful right here. I cannot emphasize enough how much you have to be careful. So I'm gonna turn it up a little bit down, up a little bit down, now I'm gonna look at my distance to go. And right now it says I have 900 thousandths to go and I can see that looks good. So I'm just gonna let it come flying up and yeah. And then it's right there, it's in position and it grabs the part really quick, really fast. And then it arcs back to that position that we set in solid cam. So again, you really gotta watch out. This is super dicey, but if you do everything nice and slowly and make sure that everything's gonna work properly, you won't have a problem and you can cut your cycle time down dramatically. <sighs> okay, so this process is actually very, very simple. There's only four G codes you need to know. First, first one is G805. The next one is G940. The next one is G941. And the next one is G942. Now the big one, looks like we're not getting G942 back. The big one is going to be G805, all right? That's going to be what sets all the variables for what the turbo mode is going to do. Now, luckily, SolidCam can actually post all this. So if you look at my screen right here, this pre-position for cutoff, the picking up, and the part move after cutoff, that's like your normal process, right? I left them in there so you could see it, but I suppressed them so they're not active right now. All I need to do now is after my contouring operation where I do my turning to uh, redeburr the thread, I'm gonna put this turbo process chamfer in there, all right? This is an MCO. So if you go up here and you see MCO, there is turbo process transfer, all right? Now, when you click on that, it's just gonna add it. Now, I'm not gonna put this in there because I already have it, but you would just hit save and exit, and that's gonna kind of do a lot of the bulk of the work for you. The only other thing you need to worry about is activating turbo mode. Now, we do that up here. You will see this flyout window. Now, I will make it bigger to make our life easier. So these are going to be the variables that SolidCam is going to output, right? So right here is a big one. You need to tell it to use G805. Once you tell it to use G805, that's gonna affect a lot of how the program's gonna post out. So you're gonna obviously make that a yes because we're using it, okay? Then you're gonna have a couple positions you need to know. These positions are actually really important and what I recommend you do is set up your machine the normal way, right? Do your pick off the normal way. Don't start with turbo process. It's kind of dangerous. We'll go back to the machine in a second. I'll show you why. You need to find the position when you call up your first tool and the subspindle rapids to its first position, you need to get your machine position from that position and put them in your X value here and your Z value here. Again, you're gonna see why these are really important later, but you need to know where those come from. Then, once you tell it all that, you'll post your program and it should look something like this. Now, everything looks the same, but you'll see right here, here's our G805. And this is gonna be our turbo mode activation G code. This is gonna tell the machine a lot of things. Now, one thing I didn't go over is there's also an M value here. That's gonna be the type of synchronization you're gonna use. It could be 417 or 418. 418 is a little bit slower because that's actually phase synchronization, but with the way my program worked out, it didn't matter, so I just used it. But what you're gonna notice is down here at the bottom, there's a big difference. Right here, this is my last threading cycle. This is the deburring pass you saw. And then you'll notice after that, there's only these three M codes on both sides. So instead of the normal ending of your program, you're gonna see all I have are three M codes on both sides, M940, 41, and 42, okay? 
So what do they do? Well, M940 is that move you're going to see the subspindle do where it rapids up to the main gang at an arc. And then after that, it's going to do M941, which is your cutoff. Now, where is it getting all your information for the cutoff? Well, that's up at the top. That's going to be in your G801 line. So it's going to know to use tool 1300. It's going to feed at 3000 per rev at 3000 RPM. So all that's going to be calculated automatically from your G801 macro. After that is M942. Now M942 is going to be that same move, but it's going to wrap it back at an arc. Now where is it going to go to is what's determined in your G805 line. So this X and this Z is where it's going to go back to. Now when you're initially setting this up, I recommend you be a little careful because it is going to arc right to that point. And if you have some long tool sticking out or something like that, it could easily hit it. It is kind of dangerous to be honest with you, but if you pay attention and do all this right, it works out pretty well. So the last thing you need to know about M942 is on the main side, it's actually going to rechuck for your next part while it's wrapping back. So normally you feed out, grab the part, cut off, go home, open your collet for new stock, and that's the process. With this, it's going to feed out while wrapping up, grab the part, cut off, and as it's wrapping back, open the chuck and go back for your next part, which is pretty cool. And what's insane is, is that this process saved me 10 seconds on a 27 second cycle time. The very last thing you need to know about this process and using it in solid cam is I told solid cam to add this weight code above the M940s. If you don't put this weight code in, then the second the counter spindle sees M940, it's just going to go flying towards the main gang. This can be incredibly dangerous. So what I recommend you do is you start with your M9006 above your M940. So this will make it wait until everything's done. And then what I wound up doing is I took this M9006 manually, so control X, and I waited until my threading tool was in position, control V, like that. So now the counter spindle is going to actually wrap it up as it's threading. So you'll notice it's not actually waiting for the pickoff to get there. It actually does it a tool before it's in position to grab the part on the last tool. And this really is what saves you the most amount of time. Because if you look at the old process versus the new, this is insanely faster. So that is one thing you will have to do manually. Not really a big deal. I kind of like it this way because it might not always work out the way it worked out for me. So you might have to move this weight code accordingly depending on how your process works. Yeah, wow, that's it. That's it, that's everything I can tell you about 